The book No Time for Karma is a collection of Paxton Roby's talks. And now he's been published in Sedona Journal. That's a bit of a breakthrough, isn't it? Or at least a change? It's new for me. I've never had the urge to write. I've always had the urge to speak. So this is uh, a challenge in the sense of trying to feel the same connection when you write that I feel when I speak. If I, uh, well, I can't always say that. I was going to say that um, if I don't feel connected when I speak, it's, it's not going to be good. But there have been times, one little story, uh, I was speaking, uh, I was facilitating a class on A Course in Miracles one time. And <clears throat> as I spoke, I felt totally disconnected. I felt like I have no clue what I'm saying. This makes no sense. And after the class, I remember commenting to uh, a friend of mine that that was just the most disconnected talk I ever gave in my life. The next week, <clears throat> a woman came up to me after the class and said, I came for the first time last Sunday. She said, L uh, Saturday before last Sunday, I was going to kill myself. And a voice in my head said, that's okay, but please go to church first. And the church where I was doing this class was the closest one to her house, so that's where she went. She said, last Sunday, you told the story of my life. I saw my life differently, and I can go on. So sometimes I have no clue where the information is coming from, uh, or what it's uh, specifically relating to. It's, it's a trust process for me, and particularly in writing now, because that is a new venture. Well, speaking about writing, one of the articles that you have put out just recently is entitled, How Can I Help? And you talk about there being another way of interpreting reality. That's a pretty tall order for most of us. Uh, but you seriously mean that, don't you? Uh, definitely, definitely. Um, we, we kind of have to preface our new life. None of us are living the same life we were living five years ago. We think differently. We anticipate different things. We're looking for the weird and unusual in our life now, where we used to be looking for the normal. <clears throat> and it's, it's overused a lot. It's, it's a cliché. But it is 2012. It is Aquarian Age energy. There is a big shift taking place, which is very hard to comprehend for people who have been living in a normal, ordinary world and had a job and thought the purpose of life was to survive, to get my family through it, to avoid as much pain and struggle as possible. Uh, have a little quality to life and that sort of thing. Now, we look at life, whether we're aware we're even doing it or not, and many people are yet to become aware that they're looking with different eyes, they're seeing life from a different perspective. It is all about, to use another cliche word, becoming empowered now. And empowered in a cosmic sense not personal power over or the ability to make money or anything like that, but to understand what's happening on planet Earth right now. And we can make some oversimplified statements and say nothing on planet Earth is what it appears to be. Life is not what we've always thought it was about. Certainly life is not about what the authority figures who raised us told us it was about. Life is in a different context these days than it used to be. We are making our own interconnection with a reality which many of us did not know existed a few years ago. We are discovering that words we used to find uncomfortable, like 
psychic or mystic or channeling or other terms that were all new agey kinds of terms apply to us now. We have a connection. We're all realizing we're all psychic. We're all realizing we're all telepathic. We are realizing that we are not helpless in the face of anything that might be in our face today. Used to be you dealt with what was in your face the best you could. Now we say, in whatever language we use, I'm a healer. There's a chance I can shift this. There's a chance this does not have to be something that's going to show up as unpleasant, difficult, challenging in my life. What sounds kind of like science fiction is the thought that <clears throat> in another year or two or five or ten, I could be living a life that has absolutely no problems in it. I could be living a life where anything that appears to me to be what I used to say was something I did not desire in my life is the key to what I do desire. That the only thing that has separated me from my normal infinite state, my normal cosmic state, is my own beliefs that I was separate, my own beliefs that I was a disempowered being. So many people are looking at their own mind and saying, this is not the mind I'm comfortable with. This is not the mind that I'm used to. I used to understand life on Earth. It was a battle, and you had to be vigilant, and you had to step around the dangers. And now I'm looking at something that says there is no danger. Life could be something that I've made up in the first place. Earth could be a training ground. It might be something that I had never even considered earlier in this life. So there's a whole new paradigm to be examined, to be looked at, to be imagined. What would life be like if I could live like the masters live? And to be integrated into our own nature, into our own being so that we can start enjoying the fruits of what we've been learning and becoming experts at living life for ages now. There is a time when you step off the wheel of karma and Find yourself free, find yourself saying, you know, it feels like I'm finally home. It feels like all the pressure is off. So that's such a new state of mind to even the serious spiritual student that it leaves us baffled. It leaves us wondering, what am I doing? What's next? What's going on here? In the 70s, a comedy group did a wonderful, funny bit entitled, Everything You Know is Wrong. It sounds like you're saying the same thing, and you're dead serious about it. Let me put it in the context of the ego. Uh, many people believe that the ego is something that they're trying to overcome or battle or what have you. Uh, I would uh, suggest that the ego is an essential part of where we want to go, where we came from. That, that, you know, there's really no way to express concepts that are outside the realm of our everyday life. We have reference points for life, and so we can speak about things that we've seen, that we've done, uh, had experiences with. <clears throat> but when we start talking about things that are beyond the physical, 
um, many good shows even on TV these days about mediums and psychics and who knows who Oprah has on next week, whatever, uh, talking about concepts that were never talked about a few years ago and that sort of uh, thing. But the idea, one of the ideas, we're looking for an easy way to make this transition, and it is a transition for everybody. We're looking for an easy way to make this transition. And the easiest thing we can do is to not say that's too good to be true. I reject that because it just sounds too good to be true. It sounds Pollyanna. Okay. Um, when we say life is not what it appears to be, we have to put everything in the context of transition. We have spent, perhaps, I just make up stories here, but we have spent perhaps millions of years learning to be individualized aspects of God. God being the all, the oneness, the source of all that is, we would have to say there can't be anything else. So you can't have God and something else. It's all God. We're God. In the beginning, God. The beginning of the Bible does not say, in the beginning, God plus a pile of bricks from which God made things. It just says, in the beginning, God. So, to make up a story, which may be useful at this time in our trip, um, we chose to become individualized aspects of God for some reason. We'll just go along with the story. Okay? In order to do that, we required amnesia of who we really were, forgetfulness, and we see that every time we incarnate. We come in with the memory wiped clean. We needed to forget who we were. We needed to develop a sense of I am unique, I am individuated, and that's what ego is for. That's the purpose of ego, is to say you are separate, okay? Learn to exist by yourself. Now the magic of the whole thing is that as we awaken back to our natural state, we also get to keep our uniqueness. So when we merge back, I've talked to people who were afraid to become enlightened. They would say, well, I'll be back one with God and I'll lose who I have been. No, the magic is everyone keeps their unique identity while re-emerging into the oneness of all that is. Now, the ego has certain tools that it has used to make us believe we were individuated from God. The main tool was the tool of fear that I might be damaged, I could be destroyed, I better watch out for myself, take care of myself. Now when we say, I'm in the shift, we're in what some people call the ascension time, the awakening time, the Aquarian age, however we want to describe it. We want to keep what's valuable and release what we no longer need for our education. So we can say, in retrospect, look back and say, ego was my friend. Ego was essential. Without ego, I would not be an individualized entity, even though that individualized entity is still one with all that is. Paradox. Eh? So, we want to release the parts of ego that are, in a sense, no fun anymore. We no longer need fear. We no longer need guilt as a motivation to develop as a separate aspect of God. 
we've already developed as a separate aspect, we get to hold on to all of our delightful experiences that we've had, release all of our negative experiences, which were only teaching tools, and we get this paradoxical magic that I am unique and I am the one God. I am all that is. I am source. So you can see that the ego, ego's point of view, was what most people thought was life. Battling. Watch out for old number one. Survive. Stay out of the way of the fast moving train. You know. And now we say, thank you ego. You have made me who I am. I release you. I let you return to the infinite realm of love. And I am now an aspect of the new earth, of the new energy that fulfills this universe right now, that is, in a sense, too good to be true. Paxton Roby's on the web at notimeforkarma.com, and now, in 2012, you'll find some of his articles in the Sedona Journal.